Let's take a second to talk about androgens. Now, what's an androgen? An androgen is a male derivative of a hormone. Let me break it down for you. Basically, androgens belong to the family of testosterone, DHT, DHEAS. In addition to that, 17-hydroxypregnenolone is also an androgen, and believe it or not, AMH. That very number that so many people use to check how fertile they are, that's actually an androgen as well. This whole family of androgens, especially testosterone, free testosterone, DHT, DHEAS, should be checked routinely in all women. And here's the reason why. We are seeing with the stress response really getting out of control and that HPA access, right? The hypothalamic pituitary access being totally burdened between stress and blue light and toxins in the environment and so much more. We are seeing more and more androgens in women. And what does that look like? Well, it's a lot of pesky symptoms. I should know. I had to deal with it. It's everything from chin hairs, hair loss, scalp hair loss, but body hair in places where we really don't want it. Maybe around your nipples, on your belly, and even on kind of this jawline here. In addition to that, high androgens will actually also cause acne, cystic acne that kind of hurts and it's right there under the skin. So many people today are dealing with that cystic acne and I know the common response is, well try Accutane. Accutane surely will make a difference, but Accutane doesn't get to the root, right? The root is this high androgen issue. Those are some of the symptoms of high androgens that are really well known. But here's a little known fact, high androgens actually also impact your mood. That's right. We know that when androgens are high, we will see all kinds of things, including anxiety, depression, OCD, even bipolar disorder. That's why for so many women, they exhibit mood symptoms maybe early in puberty when all the hormones are trying to sort themselves out and they're about to enter kind of a more regular phase. Well, during that phase of sort of hormone irregularity, they're often dealing with high androgens and nobody knows and nobody catches it. Well, fast forward to perimenopause and menopause where cycle irregularity starts to go away. Well, the next thing you know, many women are dealing with those same high androgen symptoms that they dealt with back when they were in early puberty. So it's again, the cycle, this hormone shifting is something that I'm really passionate about and I want you guys to understand for you. So when we're talking about hormones, everyone thinks we're talking about estrogen, progesterone, thyroid, cortisol, and they're not wrong. We definitely are, but the androgens get neglected. We even think a lot of breast cancer might be missed because it's due to high androgens, not necessarily just high estrogen. And I know you guys are so tired of me saying this over and over again, but all the hormones work together. But I think it's really important to understand, and it took me years to figure this out for myself, and I just don't want that for you. I want you guys to have sort of this formula in your hand so that you can turn things around for you. Here's the connection. High estrogen, when it's not broken down, can convert to androgens. High insulin, remember the blood sugar hormone? When it's not broken down, can actually spike cortisol, which spikes androgens. We also know that when the thyroid is stressed or progesterone is too low, those are conditions which, guess what? Create high estrogen, create high insulin, create belly fat, create high androgens. Boy, are things a royal mess. Flashback to me, right? Back when I was about 25, 26 years old, I was dealing with sudden weight gain, scalp hair loss, like you can kind of see a little bit now, most of it's gone, but I had this huge part in the middle of my scalp. You could see my scalp. People would stare at my scalp and wonder what was going on with me. Like, you know, was, was I sick? Did I have cancer? But I had high androgens and my entire health journey, no one checked my androgens until I actually figured it out for myself. This is why I'm so passionate about this. Not only did I have high androgens, I actually also had many symptoms of inflammation. And I also was depressed and anxious. My joints hurt, I couldn't sleep at night, I was chronically fatigued, all due to these pesky hormones. Androgen dominance is real. It is blocking mood, it's blocking fertility, it's impacting how we look and feel, it's triggering inflammation, it's triggering anxiety and many mental health conditions and it's made worse by the combination of stress, our environment, 
and an unhealthy diet, one in which we're getting a lot of processed and packaged foods and high glycemic foods. We need to help balance blood sugar to help keep those androgens down. What does that mean? Well, we're back to talking about protein, and I know I've done a ton of videos about protein, and I'm gonna keep hitting this because I think it's so important, and it's hard, right? It's hard to figure out how to get these protein grams in, but check out this video on protein that I've done to maybe help start that conversation for you. But it's really important to get that protein in. We wanna get in about 20 grams of protein every four hours or so. We know that that pushes insulin down, that pushes and manages the blood sugar and keeps the blood sugar nice and stable, and that in turn, helps indirectly to slowly reduce androgens. That's one pattern. The second pattern is a gut pattern. We know that high candida, and I've done lots of videos on candida too, so check that out right here. We know that high candida also is impacting androgens. So if there's too much yeast in the gut, well, guess what? It spikes those androgens. Androgens and insulin work together, back to the belly fat, the mood issues, the fatigue, the inflammation, everything we just talked about. So that is the gut pattern that I often see over over and over again with you know high androgens and having some of these derivatives there. So we know that the androgens are a reflection of what's happening in our environment and definitely just sort of a statement on women's health in general where women today, including our girls, are one of the most stressed generations of women in history. And again, it's the combination of the environment, the incredible stress out there and food and food quality that's just not the same as it once was. So hopefully this clarifies for you a little bit about what androgens are, maybe chips and how to begin. But remember, this is only the beginning. If you wanna learn more about androgens, join my Superwoman Circle. We talk about hormones every month in the circle. I take your questions. The link is very easy. It's drtaz.com backslash SWC. And remember, my line of supplements in the East West Way, the Belly Fix and Hormone Helper were both designed specifically to help the issues with androgens and candida because many of those are connected to ultimately what I had, which is PCOS. And I'm not talking about PCOS in this video because I do think that many people just assume because they don't have ovarian cysts, they don't have PCOS. This is an issue of high androgens and high insulin, and it's an epidemic. I don't want you to suffer from that. If you'd like to learn more about androgens, definitely join my Superwoman Circle. And if you would like to start with my products, go to theeastwestway.com and you will see both the Belly Fix and Hormone Helper. All right, we'll keep on it. We'll talk about hormones and everything else in between. If you like this video, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to subscribe.